Hello all, it's Melinda. It is just the end of week two of the um, Summer Scrap Challenge over at Mind the Scrap Facebook group. And I just finished this layout. And I was left, after I cut this, with my white cardstock and the cutout. And I positioned it in the center so that I could use this for something else if I needed to. But I got thinking that it's in the perfect spot to do a additional layout if I do some mixed media maybe behind it and layer this over it. So I'm going to stick you on fast forward and I'll give you a, a little glimpse of the madness in my head. I'm going to need to trim the photo up. And if, this is a photo that I had printed, if I printed one just for this layout, I probably would have printed it um, smaller. I'm just marking kind of where this is going to lay so I can make the color where I want it. I'm going to put gesso on with an old credit card, a very thin, thin layer. I end up wiping, getting most of this off. Just so that um, the paint medium can move around a little bit more and not soak into the cardstock. I'm going to dry it with the heat tool just because I'm impatient. I have been in my scrap room this day for probably three or four hours cleaning up and scrapping and I had just finished that layout and I wanted to get this one done before I went to bed so I was in a hurry. These are Jane Davenport Mermaid Markers in Coral and Byron Bay. Just going to spritz the page real lightly and then just put blobs of this on. And they're not moving around as much as I want, so it will need more water. And I'm, I want, I'm wanting them to move around a little bit, and then I swirl them, and I think, oh no, I made purple. <laughs> but you know what? I'm going to go with it. What I'm going to do is, this is rubbing alcohol, and it is 91%. And I'm spraying it on and just going to sop up all the extra because what it does is it makes the paint separate. I love that. I should have not rub rubbed it off like this. I should have let it dry overnight because I like the vibrance of the colors. It's not bad, but I liked it in that shot we just had. But I did what I did. I was in a hurry. I'm going to dry both the front and the back side. I'm going to cut the manufacturer strip off that. This is a die cut with the view paper pad. It's double sided uh, Zodiac and I'm looking for something so that I can uh, border this whole layout in. And I notice this has a lot of purplies and navy blues grays in it. I'm going to go with this one. It's got a little bit of that iridescent shine to it. I thought it looked very unicornish, if that's a word. Now I'm just going to put adhesive all the way around this. And if you notice, I just turned this, the whole thing, and I'm going to lay it back down. The underside is in the wrong spot. And I noticed that the horn is not got any color on it so I realized what I did rotated it back now I'm just gonna glue down with liquid glue the little parts why I decided that I need to mat this is because when I when I lay two 12 by 12s down together I tend not to get them on straight and instead of fussing with them so much I just know I'm gonna mat it and slice it off so that it's level square and all that it's kind of my cheater way of dealing with it. And I'm not going to save the center of this and gut it. I'm just going to use the whole thing, mainly because of all the warping that the page is doing. I wanted another page, a page paper to settle it down. And I used the score tape which sticks instantly and I realized that I just could not get it 
level. So I'm taking a X-Acto knife and trimming the unicorn section down so that there's almost an equal amount of the purple paper showing. It's one thing about score tape. Once you stick it on, it is stuck. That's why I like using it when I have uh, watercolor paper that I've used and I'm mounting it. It helps with the warping. That looks a little better. Yeah, see the photo to me is just a little bit big and but I was going to go with it. I had used a software on my phone or an app to make everything black and white in the background and make her color a while ago when I printed the photo. I think I've even used this photo before. I'm just testing my the marker colors to see which ones would go. I don't actually end up using the marker. I was thinking of outlining the unicorn but I set it against it. I'm going to sprinkle some gold. I'm going to roll it off. Now I need to find some layers to put behind the photo. I'm going to go with the same exact sheet that is in the background. Just got a thin border of it. And then there's some cut apart sheets in here that I'm going to use for layers. I don't have a lot of papers in purple. Sorry, my dog is coming down to visit me. He'll lay down. It won't bother us. The tag normally I journal on, but um, this time I'm just using it for the gold. The green part does not go with it, so I don't want to necessarily bring it into the layout, but I want the gold tab at the top. One more layer. I fuss with these layers a little bit before I staple it together. My goal was to try to make this as minimal as possible so that I could see more of the unicorn. Again, smaller photo would have been better. Just staple the layers together. Pull the flare badge that says fly and it's purple-ish. So I thought that would be perfect. I wrote my title out so I could pull letter stickers for it. And the title is going to be Never Lose Your Sense of Wonder. Now I wanted this sparkly font and I realized that as I did it I have no E's. And I have no letters that I can really make an E out of very easily so I'm going to use a three. I don't love it but it it works. These little asterisks they have, uh, I only need three. I put the fourth one back. Now I'm going to speed this up a lot because I use this for the rest of the title, the Never Lose Your Sense Of and I'm going to color them with um, a brush tip marker in black so that they work for my layout. And my dog's going back upstairs now. He's done with me. And this is just, like I said, a brush tip marker and I spread the letters out so I could color all of them without problems. And I just go over them and then I notice when I'm doing this on white, so they're white, 
when I moved them to the mat when I'm ready to put them on, I noticed that I missed some spots, so I just have to fix that a little bit. See right there, I'm like, oh, yeah, there's little spots here and there. This dries pretty quickly, but the marker on the wax paper doesn't dry, so I do get it on my hands. I'm going to try to put these in a sort of an order so that I can figure out where I want to place them. I like to use my um, tweezers for this because these letter stickers are a little bit finicky. Now I'm going to move that. It was hard for me to tell, tell space-wise with the letters being so spread out on the wax paper. One thing I don't like about this font is the L is so tall. But it does okay for this. I'm going to do a almost, a, I call it a, a, a sticker sneeze. I should have not put so many on. But these are just little tiny star wood veneer and gold sequins. And I wanted the smaller gold, not the large gold. I've mixed them up. I thought it was going to be a smart thing for a, for storage, and I tend to only want either the small or the large, so I should fix that, but I probably won't. Like I said, um, it um, I don't love how many I put on, but it's done. They're glued on and they're not coming off. I'm going to staple the tag. And this is just the gold thread. I wanted it to go so it showed up on two sides of the of the photo cluster. And I just want to put some hot glue in the center and let the rest of it float around. Once I have it in a page protector, it's not going to do too much when I'm moving around, so it won't be a big deal. I'm going to put glue dots on the flare badge. My one pink marker for, for my wonder marker or mermaid markers I think has a leak because every time I use it I get pink hands. Now I'm just going to use my mo Tombow Mono to glue all these down. And like I said, I wish I'd left some of them off, but it's done. I'm just going to write my journaling right there under the chin of the unicorn it says always be curious always look for the answers big and small love mom she is the curious one of the group she does ask a thousand questions just going to erase the pencil slow it down and give you a close up All in all, I'm very happy that I did a second layout with the same cut file. Very efficient. Thanks for watching, and there is no close-ups, just this one shot. Thanks for watching.